Hello and welcome to Firearm Freedom. This is going to be another first impressions video. In today's first impressions video, we are taking a look at two brand new holsters that I got in for my Springfield TRP operator. And before we get this video started, I just wanted to give a huge shout out to this video sponsor. This video sponsor is of course, right to bear. Primarily, what I love about them is their incredibly affordable price point. $15 a month is going to get you a whole host of legal protection, and it is total self-defense protection. So what that means is you don't have to just simply use a firearm in order for them to cover you legally in court afterwards. If you defend yourself with any tool, hands, feet, hammer, whatever, it doesn't matter, Right to Bear is going to come to your aid if you need them. You're also gonna get a lot of different firearm training options out there from Right to Bear, and they are in a variety of different states. So it is a really cool company. They partner up with Palmetto State Armory a ton, so it's nice to see them support other firearms companies as well. You can actually get even more off that $15 a month by putting in my discount code. It is just going to be FREEDOM. If you put FREEDOM in the discount code section on protectwithbear.com, that is going to save you an additional 10% off of your subscription. Check it out and thank them for supporting this video. Rarely on the channel does a company just blow me away in customer service and quality of product. It does happen a lot. There's a lot of great companies out there, but it is still a lot more rare than you might think with how many videos I do on the channel. You guys know I've been doing multiple videos on my Springfield TRP operator. This thing is a beast, and in the full review video, I did talk about the fact that I wanted to conceal carry this firearm. I wanted to carry it on my person, and I've been doing that since this first impressions video, and how I've been doing that is with Falco holsters. Falco makes leather holsters, of course. Full disclosure, what is my relationship with Falco holsters? They sent me these two holsters for free to check out. Still had to wait a few weeks to get them, and that's about it. They didn't ask me to say any extreme positives or anything like that. They just wanted to hear my genuine opinion about these two holsters. In searching for an inside the waistband holster for the TRP with the Surefire X300, it is not the easiest task. There's a lot of kind of just not great Kydex holsters that are out there on different Etsy sites and other things that I, I don't know that I, I would trust. And then I came across Falco's website. And the first thing I noticed about Falco is they make some badass leather. I mean, this is just really, really nice, thick, high quality leather. So I started looking around and they have a Springfield TRP full rail operator holster with the X300. Not only that, but on their entire website, I've never seen a company with so many models up for selection for their holsters and also so many different types of holsters. You have Kydex hybrid holsters like this one here that we'll talk about. And then you also have more traditional inside the waistband holsters, but then they have shoulder holsters, cross draw, small of back, ankle, everything you can imagine is on this website. And they also offer laser engraving. Now this was a touch that, again, it just blew me away. So I didn't ask them to do that. I didn't even give them my, my logo. They sent it to me with my logo on there. And you know, I gotta say that just, it, it was awesome. I've been going through some rough times recently behind the scenes here on the channel and seeing this, it just, it lit my day up. It was pretty cool. So they are able to do cool laser engraving like that and then check it out just right on the back with that leather burned in, it looks sweet. So I have been utilizing the most out of the two, this inside the waistband holster. Now the model on this is A121, I believe. It's a little hard to search, but I'm pretty sure if you put in A121, it's gonna come up with this inside the waistband leather rig that you can customize and, and choose. Now. 
I had a little bit of a particular kind of layout that I wanted, which I did choose on here. With that, I chose good grip. So you have essentially more trigger protection or good grip. And you can see with good grip, I can kind of see half of the trigger. Now, on a regular striker fired gun, I would say, no, sir, that's not gonna be what you wanna do. However, on a 1911 with a manual safety and a grip safety and being inside the waistband, I'm really not that worried about it. When it's in the waistband, your clothing is also covering that area, so it's not visible. Only the rear portion is visible, so I'm really not too worried about it. But that is something to consider. If you have a striker-fired gun, you're definitely going to want to probably choose more trigger guard protection rather than a better grip. But I made that call based off the fact that this is a 1911. Now, this is of course designed to be a strong side holster. I have for the past eight years carried my VP9 appendix always. I have just started getting into the 1911 world for concealed carry. Don't ask me why, I don't know. At this point, I'm just owning it. Yes, I'm carrying a 1911 full time. It is what it is, and I'm carrying it in the strong side position. It is feeling a little bit better on my back. I've had lower back issues in the past, and carrying a large gun appendix just was causing my hips to tilt and cause some issues. So when I'm carrying a 1911, it conforms to my body, and I prefer to carry the 1911 in a leather rig. I just think they mate really well together. Now, this has two belt loops here that clip on the top super easy to put on. I've dealt with a lot of clips before that are a pain in the ass to actually put into position. And when you're trying to get the holster all configured, it sucks to do that. But I've had no issues with putting this holster in, taking it out, not wearing it anymore, switching pants, whatever. It is super easy to put on. Now you have a slight cant here. So when it's inside the pants, you're gonna be like right around here. So it's really more like four o'clock position draw is perfect and like this is <laughs> it's kind of a big deal i've made holsters before this is not easy to make a holster for especially a wet mold leather holster i mean that is with the x300 a full rail five inch 1911 that's ridiculous so i just want you guys to know how like <laughs> impressive that is to come out with a holster like that in a few weeks but I do have the high sweat guard or kind of medium sweat guard. And you guys heard me mention in the first impressions video that I don't think I could carry this inside the waistband with these grips. Surprisingly, amazingly, I have not had an issue with these grips. So I, I don't know what the deal is there. It's not rubbing through my shirts or anything. So that's pretty cool. No issues with the grips, been keeping it exactly how it is and draw and of course presentation is excellent. I got a lot of getting used to again, pulling up my garment in the strong side position. And you guys are gonna see that a lot in the B-roll at the range. I'm very used to appendix over the years. So switching to strong side, it has taken me a good hot minute to get used to that again. As far as the concealment holster, this is excellent. And I, I think it is absolutely worth the money to pick this up if you were looking for a good leather holster for something like a hammer fired gun. They also just came out with the C908, which is essentially their hybrid holster. So they have a leather portion on the rear of the holster and Kydex mold on the front. Again, when we're talking fitment here, I mean, dude, like just listen to, are you kidding me? Like <laughs> it's impressive to me because again, an X300 full rail TRP, pretty good. I was like raving about it in the, the email back to him. I was very, very impressed with that. But the fit and finish, Excellent, absolutely superb on the holster. The only thing that I am noticing, so you have stitching here for your sweat guard, and you'll notice there's a little tiny bit, I'll try to get that on there, a little tiny bit of fraying. And look, this is an incredibly aggressive 1911, so my worry is that over time, that fraying is gonna just kind of eat away at that area. I don't know, we will see, but the, fit and finish of this holster was excellent. This has a very large sweat guard. So I, I don't know, it looks a lot more large 
when the gun is outside of the holster, when the gun's in the holster, it's not as bad. At first, I wasn't too jazzed up about that, but then I started carrying it and I realized that it gives me a little more protection from getting a bunch of crud just up in my firing pin channel there, and I really don't mind it at all. You have standard belt loops on the other side. Nothing really special there. You can choose different clip options if you would like, and you can also put this on any sort of a cant. For a standard outside the waistband holster for this pistol, I, I was incredibly impressed, and again, Normally with striker fired guns, I, I always get a little concerned with leather folding over and getting into that trigger guard. But on a hammer fired 1911, I don't really have those concerns. It's not as big of a deal for me. Price point wise, you get a lot for your money when it comes to the customization of these holsters and the model options that they have. This is the type of leather holster that's going to last you a lifetime. You're, you're never going to have to get another holster if you care for this leather properly. And I think as it breaks in over time, it's just going to get better and better. Great folks over there. They did send me their all leather heavy duty gun belt. I'm going to do a separate video on the belt so that this one doesn't get too incredibly long. But ultimately, this is my first experience picking up Falco holsters. And man, it is now my go-to source for leather holsters. So huge shout out to them. That is going to wrap this first impressions video up. I'm gonna to continue to carry this TRP, get it back to the range as frequently as I can, and of course, update you along the way. If you guys have any other questions about this pistol or anything else on the channel, please put it down below in the comment section. And you guys know I absolutely will get back to you. While you're down there, head up to the description for the different ways to support the channel. And as always, stay tuned for more great videos coming soon.